Welcome to Dirt, Sweat, and Gears, and you know what? No, we're not doing this. It's snowing. All right, so there's not going to be a video this week, and why is that? Well, because my garage doesn't have insulation or electricity or heat or really anything that makes it possible to work in these conditions. It is just too cold. It is too dark and I just won't be able to get any work done. I would much rather sit inside and drink coffee. So this week, you're going to watch a video I've been sitting on for a couple of months. Let's just get right to it. And real quick, if you are sitting at your computer saying, oh, I work on my car in the snow all the time. You know what? That's great. It's just great. But here, snow is not common. In fact, I have only seen snow where I live once in my life, maybe twice, but it never stuck the way it has right now. Uh, it is getting back to raining, but man, it is, it is freezing out here, literally freezing. It's beautiful, but it's freezing. So I'm going to go inside and sip on some coffee and you can enjoy this video. Welcome to Dirt, Sweat, and Gears, where the homes are broken in more ways than one. Ooh, that was dark. We are here on location at my newest project. This is my house. This is a house I didn't buy. This is a house I do not want. This is a house I did not pay for. Screwing around aside, this house used to belong to my dad. He passed away in April of this year, and uh, my brother and I acquired it uh, as, as our inheritance. And so being that my dad did not, uh, was not a man of means. Well, let's just say that, uh, this house is, uh, pretty much all he had to leave us. So, uh, when we acquired this house together, uh, it was actually a pretty smooth transition to having the title transferred. Uh, I decided that uh, I wanted to try to uh, maximize its value as much as I could. So you could say that this is uh, a, a video about investing uh, as much as it is about projects. Um, but um, I decided I wanted to bring its value potential up as high as I reasonably could uh, without uh, really killing myself. And uh, I gotta say, I almost did. So my brother agreed to the, me doing this work, and since he's out in Texas, uh, I am, am local, nearby. Uh, I decided that I was going to do as much of the work as I could myself, not only to save costs, not only to maximize value potential with as little money as possible, but also uh, because I enjoyed the work. And uh, I lived in this house. I lived here from, I think I was about, between 19 and 23, 24 is when I moved out. I moved uh, out probably three times when I was living here. When my dad and I moved here, uh, this is when our relationship kind of uh, took a nosedive. Things weren't very good between us. And this was uh, really kind of a way to reconnect with uh, not only that time of my life, but to also kind of bring closure to uh, my relationship with my dad. Now we did patch things up before he passed away. I'm really happy about that. We both made uh, an effort to be better people and to be better to each other. And I'm really grateful to that. I am not gonna go any deeper than that into any of these things because that is really quite personal. And also that's not what this channel is about. This channel is about the project you're here well really you are thought you were here to see a car but uh you were most definitely not uh this is this project has been uh really i thought this was going to go pretty quickly when my dad passed away he left behind three roommates uh one of them was his caregiver and her partner as well as uh, a friend of his from work living in the other room and because this is a manufactured home there are rules to home ownership in this HOA. And one of them is that 
Uh, you can't own this house unless you intend to live here. Well, I have two houses of my own. I live in one of them. I have uh, a lot more land than this and I really enjoy my houses. I don't want to live here. So I have to get rid of the house. And uh, that meant, unfortunately, having to deliver some bad news to good people. And uh, they had to leave. Once they were gone, I thought this was going to be a relatively straightforward process. And boy, oh boy, was I wrong. This project was three straight months of the hardest work I've ever done in my life. And the reason why I didn't bring you on this journey, uh, aside from some personal reasons, was because um, painting takes a long time. It takes a lot longer than you might think. It took a lot longer than I thought, that's for sure. So enough of me standing here. Let's go outside. Let's take a walk around this house. I'm going to show you uh, some of the things that I did, some of the quirks and features, uh, if I'm get going to be Doug DeMuro for a minute. Uh, and then we're going to come back inside and I'll talk about some of the work I did in here because it's uh, quite extensive. Let's go. So we're outside the house here. It is kind of late afternoon-ish. And uh, this house, uh, the front of the house faces eastward, the master bedroom faces westward. And uh, we'll talk about the view from the other side because it is actually quite spectacular. But in the front here, you see I have uh, painted everything. And so while we do this uh, kind of show and tell, I am going to show some slides of uh, pictures from uh, before and after and some of my process photos. So in the front here, we have the approach, just a really nice color scheme. Uh, the plants were already well kept. I added most of these rocks. Uh, however, I didn't get to complete this project, unfortunately, because my Jeep broke. So I had nothing to move the rocks with. And uh, you're not moving 500 pounds worth of rocks in a Mazda Miata. Uh, so we have the front bay window here, which is really, really nice. Uh, I had to replace pretty much all of the wood uh, along the bottom and three sticks of, of the vertical uh, up there. I didn't have to really do anything with. It came out, came out pretty nice. On the front here, uh, painted everything. Really, uh, this was mostly just paintwork up front. It came out looking really nice. I'm really happy with the color scheme. If this color scheme looks familiar, it could be because you've seen my prior remodel videos because this is the exact same color scheme that I painted the inside of my rental house. You know, the side approach here, the gate is open because I was doing some work out here. Uh, let's walk down this pathway so you can kind of see it from the bottom of the hill. But uh, here's a little preview of the view we're going to be looking at later on. You see from down here, this is all kept by management. So uh, this is not one of the responsibilities of the homeowner. Uh, it sits atop of the hill here. It kind of looks really good. Uh, I got my ladder off to the right there. I got to take care of that. But all of that was painted and uh, actually painting this was kind of a bear. Uh, there used to be a big giant tree uh, at the back of the house and it was growing really close to the house. So I actually couldn't get a ladder up to uh, paint the peak and all of that area over there. So I had to tear out the tree, even if I wanted to paint it. I wanted to tear out the tree anyway because I really wanted to open up the view. So uh, it was something I was planning to do anyway, but even with the tree gone, it was very, very sketchy uh, getting up that ladder uh, because I had to get up a uh, long extension ladder and there was a time where I was right about there and the ladder was, you know, up there where I got up to the top of the ladder and then it started to slide. And luckily I jumped off before the ladder collapsed completely. Uh, that was pretty much my near death experience on this house. I had to uh, change my pants after that, that's for sure. And I did uh, paint the inside of the fence. I didn't paint the outside of the fence because um, I don't care. Thankfully, I'm not the one selling this house. 
to, to just say, oh, I don't, I didn't fix that because I don't care. <laughs> uh, these uh, cinder blocks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stack up in a few minutes once I'm done with this video. But out here we have a, a patio. Uh, there used to be a jacuzzi there. Uh, it was probably original to the house from 1988, 1989. And it was, we demolished it because it was about ready to demolish itself. So we have here a sunroom. This is not actually a room in the house. It's not considered a room legally. And uh, good luck permitting it as a bedroom. But that said, we did extend the roof line at some point. Um, I guess my dad's friend who re-roofed it a few years ago uh, extended the roof line above the sunroom because my dad was actually living in there. Uh, it was his decision, his choice. Uh, I, I wouldn't live there. In fact, I did live here. Let's go inside. So since we're still technically outside the house, we're going to go ahead and walk into this sunroom. I did live here uh, when we first moved in and I hated it. This was actually the reason why I moved out for the first time. Um, it was just a small room and it was not very well insulated. It was very loud. You hear everything outside uh, because it's not a bedroom. It's not a bedroom. But it is a really cool space to uh, protect your stuff from the elements. Maybe you like plants, maybe you have Want to make this into a cat room or something? I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's still a cool little space, just uh, not a space to live in. It's moving around to the back here. You see, this is, this is actually the view that's going to sell the house. This is gorgeous. So, we're actually going to check in here as the sun sets too, because it is really, really pretty. And this is one of the things that I genuinely do like about this house. Because here, this house is where the 4th of July parties are at. Because you can see fireworks for miles. It's just, it's spectacular. Uh, I believe the uh, Mission College also does their own fireworks show. At least they have. So you get some really close fireworks as well. But you also have uh, other various uh, fireworks shows from different high schools scattered throughout the city that are farther out. So you just see at nine o'clock on July 4th, the sky just completely lights up and you see everything. It's really gorgeous. Right here, we have a sliding glass door that comes out to this area. Uh, nice big, nice big view of uh, the valley, which is really cool. We've got my uh, very well used ladder. And we have the side of the house here. Uh, this side painting actually went really quick. Uh, I took, so while I was painting this house, for the most part, it was about 100 degrees. So it was pretty miserable out here. But uh, I took on this house on a cloudy day. It was like the first cloudy day of the year. And I just banged it out as quick as I could because uh, this is the south side. This side uh, during the day gets all the sun exposure. So we have here brand new HVAC. Well, it's not brand new. It's probably three, four years old. And a uh, clean little run here. That satellite dish that I could have taken down but didn't because I don't care. Let's go into the house. We're going to go in through the front door because we're not savages. And I've replaced the doorknobs and the locks, painted everything. Doorknobs and locks uh, really made a huge difference in this house. Really makes it look better. Actually, let's go into the garage. So before we get too far into the house, we're gonna take a quick look at the garage. It's what you'd expect from a garage. There's, there's nothing weird about it. Uh, of course, I have the trash cans in here because they're full of trash. Trash day, I'm gonna roll them out and uh, they'll be nice and empty. And all my stuff, that's gonna go too. Actually, we're picking that up tomorrow. With my contractor's actually gonna help really nice of them. So you have the breaker sub panel here. This is the first time I've ever seen that panel closed. The entire time that I have known my dad, the entire time I have known this house, I've known that panel to be just hanging open. 
You see, I have this nice bicycle. Um, it, it must have belonged to one of the previous occupants and they don't want it. And this is actually a nice bike. So uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a try. I don't know if I'll actually ride it, but maybe. Let's close that and move on to the inside. So inside here, uh, we have a nice big opening that leads into uh, more or less openness. There's a, a great big great room, I guess is what it's called. Uh, nice, really nice high ceiling in the entryway here. Uh, this was uh, kind of, so the first thing that I had to do in, when I got inside this house was paint the ceiling. If you've ever painted a popcorn ceiling, you know what I'm about to say. It's a nightmare. There's no way to slice it. It's terrible. There is no good way to do it. You can spray it, but my sprayer failed and I actually had better luck rolling it. So I rolled the ceiling and I went through about 15 gallons of paint. It was terrible. In here we have the kitchen. I didn't do anything to the kitchen other than the floor. These are the appliances that came with the house. They are going with the house. Uh, I don't have a taste for white, uh, but they don't look bad considering the gray floor and off gray walls. Let's turn on the lights here. So this up here, I actually uh, just did the uh, light ballast yesterday. So uh, this one is brand new, which if you have any sense, you're just gonna rip it out anyway and replace it with LEDs, but that's okay. I wanted to bring the value of the house up, not bring it down, so I decided to replace it. Countertops, I had to repair the grout. Uh, you see here the uh, tile's a little bit sunk in here. Uh, I am I have concerns about the structure of this thing, but uh, you know what this looks good uh, It doesn't look good. It, it looks dated and it all needs to go and anybody who uh, is uh, Wants to do some work is going to really enjoy doing some work in here so I didn't touch the cabinets or uh, Really the counter aside from some repairs did not touch the appliances. I just cleaned them And it even has some old floor tile in the cabinets, uh, whatever. I also did not replace the receptacles. I replaced the outlet covers because I wanted uh, all of the outlet covers to match and I wanted them all to be there because some of them were just missing. The vents in the house, don't ask why there are two right next to each other. Actually, let's address this. There are, looks like there are two vents next to each other, but that one over there is non-functional. It is just a box. See, it's just a box. It goes nowhere. So this collects trash. I figured I would put the only mismatched vent in that spot and close it so that it doesn't continue to collect garbage. This great room actually looks really nice. I'm really happy with how it came out, especially with the floor and the, the trim and everything. So I added this room. Actually, I paid to have this added. This was the project that I hired my contractor to do, and he did an amazing job. I, uh, kind of a last minute decision, decided we should go with a double door because this is a bedroom. But if you did not want to use it as a bedroom, you could open up both doors. And then use it as a dining room. You could use it as a den. You could use it. Honestly, if I were living here, I would use this as a theater room. I think this would be a great uh, living room because you could put a big ass TV on this wall over here and just a huge sectional couch. Obviously you'd want to block off that vent or, uh, you know, make sure you don't block it. And this would be like my theater room. It would be surround sound and everything. That's what I would use it for. 
So this, is, this turned out to be a really cool room. It fits the house really well. It's a great size, but without being too big or too small or anything. So you have here just a little random closet. It's got some built-in shelves. Kind of neat. Uh, we're gonna go back and make our way forward. So this is the master bedroom. This room, uh, when I got into the house, I started painting the ceiling and my contractor got started on that room. First, actually the first thing my contractor did was rip up all the carpet. So this was just a base floor. And uh, so I put my contractor to work on the new room and I started with the ceiling. And because this room was out of his way, I actually started in here, uh, not only to stay out of his way, but also because this room was significant and I knew that finishing it would be a really great motivator for me to continue. Because I gotta say, painting a house for three straight months uh, can make you insane. I'm not a painter and I don't have a lot of patience. Painting is slow, patient work. The paint under the paint is a darker paint than the paint that I'm painting. So I have to paint over that paint with a second coat of paint in order to match the color of the paint. So I did a, a bunch of work on this room. Obviously I painted everything and then I did the floor and then uh, I did the baseboards and really this was the first room that was finished. And it was really exciting because, uh, you know, I learned some things. I actually learned a new uh, technique for cutting baseboards. My contractor taught me and it came out really nice. All of my corners are really, really, really nice. So I'm learning how to cut baseboards like a professional. And as you can see, the room is filled mostly with compromise and failure. But this is the perfect cut. And guess where it's going to go? Best cut ever. I'm told I should seek therapy. They say that this is just a coping mechanism. And here's the master bathroom. Uh, did not touch the vanities, didn't touch the bathtub or really anything in here. I did put a flow flow uh, shower faucet on here. So that conforms. And there's really not a whole lot to be done. I see a piece of tape on this door, but I'm gonna pull it off because I don't care. And so I didn't really have to do anything in here. The, this floor was actually here when we got here. I, all I did was paint and uh, actually my wife helped with that. So we're out of here. And then we have this really nice big closet. This is just a huge closet. I actually lived in this room uh, for a time. This was when I moved back in. Uh, after I moved out for the first time, I moved back in. I moved in here. And when I moved in here, I uh, was actually kind of uh, really excited because, you know, things were, things were going really well for me anyway. I was in college and I could really feel like I had my own space. So uh, I pretty much lived in here. I put my mini fridge in front of that window and then my CRT television, uh, 27 inch CRT television, which is the size of a small car on top of it. And then I built a little table out of plywood and uh, put it in that corner. It's my computer and my huge monitors uh, for uh, doing graphic design. And then I had my bed here, a little section of couch there. So uh, coming back into this room uh, really kind of made some memories, uh, brought back some memories for me. And here's a laundry room. Uh, these appliances still have the plastic on them. At least this one, yeah, they still have the plastic on them. So they're basically brand new. I'm gonna take off this blue tape. And I do not have them hooked up because I don't want that liability. So all I did in here was lay down the floor and baseboards 
and got out of here as quick as I could. Uh, these, this room and that room, I would call them the miserable rooms because uh, doing the floor in here was uh, pretty tough because you have all of the intricacies of a room just like that, but uh, just like that master bedroom or just like this bedroom, but none of the payoff. So you have have precision cuts, you've got tight corners. It's actually really uh, a lot harder and just overall a lot less satisfying. And I noticed something that I actually can't ignore. I gotta paint that, damn it. Well, I'm gonna circle back to that after I've done with this video before I leave this house. And in here we have the bathroom, the other bathroom. Uh, I, this was my bathroom for some time. Uh, I did not touch that. I didn't touch that. I didn't even really touch this. Uh, I did put on a new faucet cap and, you know, handle thing. So uh, just to make it look a little bit nicer. And then I lived in this bedroom for a while too. I lived in every bedroom in this house. But uh, this room was, this, this room was less good times. This room brings back mostly bad memories. Uh, I did not live here long. This was uh, when I moved out for the second time. Yeah, so uh, after I moved out for the first time, I moved back in, I was in here. And then when I was living here, my dad decided he wanted me to live there. So he moved all of my stuff. Just, I came home from school one day and all my stuff was in here. So I had to make it work. Still a good room though. It's a good size. I just uh, didn't want to live here. And moving back out into this room. And so when I moved back in for the third time, the third and final time, I moved back into this master bedroom and I was like, okay, things are gonna be better this time. I painted everything. Uh, I uh, bought blinds and everything for the, for the room. I, I made it a really, really nice room and I uh, lived here for another year or so before I moved out for the final time. But look at this view. Look at this, this is awesome. This is really, really great. So that's the tour of the mystery project that I've been working on for the past few months. Really with this house, uh, this was a project that I wasn't expecting, a uh, project I didn't ask for. I, I kind of asked for it. Uh, and certainly a project that, uh, that uh, took a lot out of me. Uh, both both financially and emotionally just because of the uh, emotional connection I have with this house with a previous owner of this house uh, and uh, so there was really uh, kind of a lot going on here uh, with me working on this place and I'm really relieved uh, really happy to be done I'm really proud of the work I did I, I, th I learned a lot on this house I uh, learned a lot about uh, flooring, finishing work, and the, 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 the technique for doing baseboards was actually something that I'm really, really grateful to have learned and practiced here because I can't wait to do it on my own space later on. Now, that's a good segue into selling this house. So my brother and I uh, are co-owners of this house as uh, my father's heirs. So we are putting it on the market and uh, hopefully going to sell it for lots of money. And I am rolling that money straight into another project that I cannot wait, that I definitely will be making public because this is going to be such an amazing experience that uh, I will uh, be endeavoring on. So uh, for that, I got to say I'm uh, very grateful uh, to have uh, to have done this work and very grateful to have 
had the opportunity to get this house. When you're working on something for so long, there, there comes a point where it feels like it's never going to end and feels like you're not making any progress, especially when I was painting. Painting was probably the worst. And once I got done with that, there was the floor. The floor was when I really felt like I was picking up steam, when I really felt like I really want to get this done. This was, that, that was actually a time where I had to temper my, my patience the most because I wanted it done so badly, but also I knew that this was not the time to take shortcuts. This was not the time to uh, skip things. I had to carefully analyze everything that I was either going to do or going to not do and decide if it was really worth it. Not just that I didn't feel like it. I mean, really, I didn't feel like being here at all. I felt like staying home and fixing my own cars. I felt like, you know, uh, just drinking beer all day. But uh, no, I had to come out here and do this work. So I really had to decide what was worth stopping for and what was worth leaving behind. And as you saw in my walkthrough, there are a couple of things that I made the analysis and I decided it was better to leave something behind. Uh, and there are some things that were better to uh, pay attention to and to get right. So that was a, a huge, really important exercise for me. Uh, and I learned a lot about uh, myself and my workflow and how I get things done. And uh, I also got to say, this was the hardest I have ever worked in my life. Uh, this is not my job. I'm not a contractor. I'm not a laborer. I'm, I'm a software developer. Uh, so I had to do my day job and uh, I could not skip that. I did take a couple of weeks off of work to do some work on this house, uh, but it was mostly paint. And so that was very unfulfilling. So I had to work my day job. I got up in the morning and I had, by the way, had cars breaking down. So I would get up in the morning, work on a car, then do my day job, then come here and work my ass off until 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. That was hard. Um, that was hard. I'm glad I did it, but I would not choose to do it again if I could help it. I would choose to do it again. Honestly, I would do it again. I would do this again in a heartbeat because I know that the work I did has value and I will see that value very soon. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, and uh, I really, you know, I don't, I didn't want to post this house not only for personal reasons, but also because uh, people don't watch remodel content. Uh, I know from my previous remodel that people watch it less than my car videos, but then something happened. I, uh, one of my, uh, biggest inspirations for YouTube content, uh, Tavarish, he actually bought a house and he's sharing that content. So I thought, huh, maybe sharing house content isn't so bad after all. As long as you're building something, as long as you're making it better, uh, there is no reason to not share it. So uh, I am really grateful to have this opportunity. Thank you very much for watching and I cannot wait to show you my next project.